you know, the sources is out there in the nature world. You visualize your image and put it on a piece of paper. My name is Norbert Peshlakai, and my Dene, which is Navajo. And my clan is Tarin House, born to the black sheep. I live here in Gallup now. Originally, I used to, I grew up in Crystal, New Mexico, which is 70 miles north of Gallup here. Right now, I am classified myself as being a contemporary precious metal artist in jewelry, small sculpture, and also flatware in my stamp work, my alphabet, my, you know, my A, A to Z, and also my seat pot. At the earlier period, I was a painter, a drawing. So painting and jewelry, those two media, were kind of battling. I just jumped back and forth and I do pretty good in painting, start selling painting again. And sometimes that painting doesn't sell, so I jump back to jewelry. And pretty soon jewelry started to pick up. Silversmithing didn't came after high school. For the first time I took beginning jewelry one at Haskell Indian Junior College in Lawrence, Kansas. I didn't like it at first, but later I I got deep into it. I think I really th thank my teacher for getting me back on the right track. He he noticed me. I was I wasn't attending his classes. One day he met me. He says, "Norbert, I miss you in classes. In order to come back to the class, I need to do for you. I need to see your sketchbook and learn your tools that I gave you. Maybe the end of the this end of the semester, maybe I consider you a good grade. So I went back into jewelry. That's how I got back in it. So silversmithing. So that means I've been doing silversmithing for 46 years. I remember he said he would hitchhike into Fort Defiance to kind of work on those assembly line where you, you make, you know, one guy's polishing and somebody else's soldering. and I forget what, what he called it, but he was trying to work there, but hitchhiking out of crystal every day was really difficult, especially in the winter time with snow and blizzards. And they lived way up in the mountains, a really hard place to get to, even, even in good weather. I first met Norbert Peshlakai Back, I don't know, I was maybe about 17 or so. I was actually working in Gallup during a certain time for Raymond and Colina Yazi, who have a shop there. And I always heard and knew about Norbert, saw him in a distance at Indian art shows, always uh, was interested in his uh, seed pots and jewelry and the creativity that he did. You know, then meeting him and Linda, and then later on Natasha and Aaron, his children, you know, and then just following what they did, what they made, Norbert, in my eyes, is one of our master Navajo silversmiths. Paying attention to every little detail from stamping to making different sorts of jewelry. His ideas are always so in innovative, whimsical, just kind of charming. You know, everything that he makes, it's, it's, it's his vision. You know, in Navajo, Peshlakai or Beshlakai, translates to basically silversmith. So it, it fits him, it fits who he is, who their family is. There's three generations in the Peshlakai family now. You know, Norbert and Linda, of course, the parents, then Natasha and Aaron, the children, and now Natasha's son, Luke, also creates pieces too. So it's, it's really exciting to see that that family is still creating a dynasty of stamp, stamp, stamp work. And it's exciting to see what the next generations are gonna do. You know, Luke also comes from his father's side, the Haley family, they're known for making handmade silver beads. So it's kind of interesting to see the two different families combine work sometimes too. And I think, again, working with Norbert and his whole family, it's a, it's a real honor because they are such gracious, humble, wonderful people. When you see a piece of jewelry, a piece of art is that there is a touch of tradition and a touch of 
a touch of influence to continue on with a, the tradition of our people. We as artisans, I think that we are, the, which I didn't realize, we are the educators to the young generation that it must be passed on, it must be, it must be handed over to the next generation and so on. So I think as in, in a strange way, as, it's unexpected as an artist, all you do is create, but you don't know as you're creating that is that you're handing down tradition that was, lear that was learned back in the 1800s back in 1860, around that time. And in that respect, this profession gives identity to our people because the commerce that is, that is established is that some of the finances goes back into to the people for religious services or to buy shoes or to buy livestock or to uh, help um, the elderly. So in that respect, you know, this this profession is helping keep our tradition alive. It kept our tradition to, to, to keep on believing in themselves and whatnot, even though it's, it's not really spoken of, but it's just shown. I really like working with my grandpa. We do lots of silver sitting together. We made a bracelet together. I've been doing work since I was 12 years old, and I just continued on with it with my father's help. And I'm from originally from Crystal, New Mexico, but I reside here in Gallup. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be able to do some of the stuff that I can do. But from there, I was able to go on with more of my stuff. They have a trait. I'm happy for them. I think it's something that they fall back on financially. And I also encourage my, my children, you know, you have to have something else. There are limited jobs excuse me, on the reservation. There are limited jobs, and uh, from there, um, job is hard to find, so uh, you have to find other means of income, not only as a silversmith, but perhaps as a, as a weaver in baskets or as a weaver in rugs. So to, to, the, to the kids is that I think they really need to look at themselves and, and fall back on something that can substantiate some, some kind of income. I just remember his dedication when he when he started working and making the bowls. He would just get lost in concentration over his work, and I think he's still like that today. And he just had a lot of imagination. Uh, you know, I maybe I lit a little spark, you know, but but after that, Norbert just took off. I think when he had his first nine bowls, I think it was. We went out on a trip to Albuquerque and Santa Fe, and I took him to see a, a big collector of mine and introduced them, and they suggested he try to get into Indian market. And so he worked the rest of a couple more months and entered Indian market, and he got six blue ribbons and a red. And I was like, you're off and running. So that, you know, finding that market was so important, I think, to him and getting the validation for his work like that. Really, I know as an artist, that's, you know, very important. My first Indian market was in either in 77 or 78, I don't remember the year, but I was still single, skinny, long hair, and new to Indian market. And my sister helped me on that day. And maybe nervous. And I had quite a big masses of jewelry. Some seat pots were like three for seventy dollars. Bracelet were hundred eighty eighty dollars, seventy dollars. And a lot of people that have been coming back to that place because it was new. I guess it was new to them. You know, this is my third time tri trip now. You're the best. I kept coming back. <laughs> so it really was a good experience. And I, I took a break. I asked my sister, to, you know, take care of the booth. I'm going to have some sandwich over at La Fonda. Let's go over there, have me a sandwich. So I went over there. Coming back, I noticed this girl bought a belt buckle from me. She was talking to her parents. Uh, holding that belt buckle and talking away about it. <laughs> and that's, 
That's appreciation, art, art appreciation. So I had a lot of response. The importance of his success to his family, setting that example for his daughter, his son, other people around him, Be, being an inspiration uh, to other artists is maybe the highest form of flattery <laughs> or whatever of, of success. I think with his work though, it's really interesting because he doesn't limit himself in what he can do, whether it be something very more traditional, something very contemporary. You know, the ideas in his mind are what draws me to his work. I learned a lot from him. He puts the texture on himself, so if it gets a little um, worn down, then he re-puts the texture back on. And then he's very precise on where the stamps go. This one here is the best one. This is his grandma's hammer. She would never use it this way. She would always hit it right here with the nails. This is like, what, four generations right here? Some of these stamps are like 70, um, back from the 70s, so. You're looking about maybe 50 years. Sometime I use multiple stamps to create an animal. For example, uh, this is Slim Cob, uh, Cowboy, and it takes about seven different stamps each one. So I start off with the body, the, and the, the boots, and, and right and left side, and the arm, and the head and the crown is just cross. cross so most of these uh, stamps are made out of concrete nails. The, the one that takes more stamps is my hummingbird, hummingbird and my Mimbus rabbit. In 1995, I started thinking about, since I have this variety of steps, why not start an alphabet with it? And later in 1999, it was in November, and I started to put this. Matter of fact, a friend that came by, I was talking to him about it. This is I'm gonna thinking about making an alphabet with my steps, and and he came back with this uh, Egyptian writing, with the symbols and all that. And he gave me some piece of paper, so I started using the rabbit as my guideline. R. And then the rest just kind of fill fill into together. And I remember the Y2K was approaching too. And what shall I do for a Y? So I kind of found a Y kind of V-shape and then put two, a line and cross two lines across ways for my Y and just call it Y2K. And later on I found out it's a symbol for yin in Japanese with that, that symbol with the Y, two lines and straight now. He said, you know what that symbol means to us? And one of the Japanese was telling me that. It's called yin. It's like a, a money. And two of the alphabet, I changed it, and, uh, is the D and the, uh, the K. The D, I was using three diamond on each top. I said, I'm going to change that to a drum. So I made a drum for it. Of that same, it didn't. I didn't use in any other jewelry, but before I got started into it, so I I restudy and said that the only one I'd like to change it is probably that D, and the wording on the K. I was using Keystone for the for the title, but I I said King. I'll put King since I have a Queen there. Well, the first when he started doing the alphabet, um, some of these artists, not artists, but um, some of these buyers, they would buy pieces from him and they would send it to other people as jokes. So <laughs> they had a little fun with it. So yeah, I think people love him and and it, it's very creative because if you look at the stamps, you know, they, they have its own meaning. His alphabet, which he created icon that represents A through Z and spells out different things. 
So all these little things that he does, whether it's pins, bracelets, rings, all the different icons or images create the alphabet. So it spells something out, almost like a secret code. So everything about Norbert's work is just kind of really interesting because it, it shows his creativity. It shows the, the versatile manner that he creates in, whether it be silver or gold or adding a stone or not. It, it, it just shows that Norbert's work is Norbert's work. And you can tell, you can tell if I saw 20 pieces in a room, you could zero in on a certain artist and that artist would be Norbert. And something that I gained from him was watching him work, seeing that intensity, that love of the work, and just, just getting lost in it. And I think that always comes through in artwork, I think, when an artist really loves their craft and loves their work, and then they contribute uh, some real personal level of ideas into the work. And Norbert is... I think just fantastic for that. The humor in his work, you know, the craftsmanship, the stamp work that is like the old uh, Mesopotamian clay tablets almost, you know, it's just eye dazzling and others are very simple. Watching him come up with all different kinds of techniques that uh, I didn't see in the 60s or 70s type jewelry that was, that was made, or at least that I saw at that time. So uh, I think, you know, that, that blending of craftsmanship, personality, and originality are three important things, and I, I think Norbert's got it all. You know, he's not limiting himself, and I think people tend to forget just because us Indian artists create something, it always doesn't have to have that real strong traditional look that, that artists can progress and do something different. Working with Norbert's a real honor because he's a real respected person. Uh, people have collected his work for years. Uh, many people know Norbert and it's really exciting to be able to share with the public Norbert. Working with his family, it's been really great. And I think what makes Norbert really unique too is um, when a museum or different art markets ask him to demonstrate, he demonstrates. Um, I think that's really neat. He'll be sitting there stamping, looking up at you while he's stamping. It's, he's like a machine. You know, his work is flawless. And, you know, just to get all the different stamps that you see, like to make an owl or a turtle or a rabbit, those sometimes people don't understand the work and labor that go into making one strike. You know, he doesn't have just a little cute rabbit stamp that he hits on a piece of silver like that. Uh, that may make eight or nine or ten different stamp marks to make uh, the single figure. If you're going to be real into it and make, you know, just be real listed and, well, you know, you establish first you, uh, yourself if you're really going to be motivating, you're really interested in doing doing so, I would advise, you know, start whatever tools you have, start from there and just keep moving. And sooner or later, it will come, come to, uh, all come together. Norbert Chitai Chimoyaja Don Alchine Dasha Erin Dotasha Don Soket Nawe Luke Alchide and Ozon Yun Hinchne 
Die in